Hi, it's Chester Tugwell at PPK Computer Training. And this and in this video, we're in Google Sheets and we're looking at creating dependent drop-down lists. So what I mean by dependent drop-down lists is I'm going to have a drop-down list here for each location, north, south, east, west. And then, for example, if I select the east location in the second drop-down list here, I only want staff in the east location to appear in that drop-down list. So I have a second sheet here that I've already prepared with each location and the staff that are in those locations. So first of all, let's just start by creating our first drop-down list here. So I select the cell where I want the drop-down list to appear. I go to the data tab, data validation, uh, criteria list from range, which is the default list from range. And then I've got to define where that range is. So let's click this little button here Select data range, go to the list tab, let's move this down, and I'm going to select those cells there, lists A1 to D1, click on OK, then click on save. If I go back to the sheet, I now have a list of all the locations that I can select. OK, so now the next step, this is a bit more involved. So what I need to do is to name each of these lists with the heading that is above the list. Now, if you've not come across naming things before, it's fairly easy to do. Okay, so this is how you create the named ranges. Go up to data, named ranges, and that will give you this pane on the right side of your screen. So you can now start adding ranges. So you give the first range a name. It has to correspond exactly to the heading. So for each of the headings that were selected for the previous drop-down list, these names need to correspond exactly to these names up here. No spaces, suffixed or prefixed or anything like that. That would be the classic thing to do to accidentally put a space in and that would uh, cause an error. So anyway, here we go. I've got south. And then what I'm going to do is specify the range of sales to include um, in that named range. Now, I could just select the cells that were uh, currently containing names. But if I want to future proof it a little bit, I might select down, say, to row 10, depending on how many names I think might eventually appear in that list. OK, so that's the first one. I can click on OK and then Done. And then I need to do the same for each of these locations, each of these named ranges. So east will be down to row 10 again. Two more to do, west. And I'll select cells to be included in the west named range. And then finally, I'm going to create one for north. Again, down to row 10, just to future-proof it a little bit. Click OK, click Done. And I've got my four named ranges. Now, once I'm happy with those, I could just close down the little pane and I could move on to the next stage. So here goes the final step for creating this second drop-down list. So what's going to happen is, is whatever location I choose here, at the moment it's south, will affect which names appear in this column. Okay, so if I choose, if south, south is selected here, I want all the southern names to appear in this column here, column F. Then what will happen is, is the drop down list here, the data validation here, will point at this column. So whatever uh, names appear in this column will then appear in the second drop-down list. So how am I going to do this? Well, I can use a function called indirect. Now indirect, all that needs to do is point at this cell here. And you can see that what it does is it actually returns the values that are within the named range I've called south. So again, 
Effectively, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, if I select East, I'm saying to the indirect function, return all the names that are within the named range called East. So here we are. Here are the members of staff in the Eastern region. Okay, so now what I can do is go back to my cell that, where I want the second drop down list. I go to data, data validation. And then what I'm going to say is again, list from range, select date, data range, lists. And again, I'm going to select all the way down to row 10. Click on OK. Click on Save. And now it should all work. So I'll just clear this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say West. And then I get West names. East. You can see that this is not valid because it's not in the, uh, this member starts in the Eastern location, but you can see I can then choose a tweener. And there we are, we've created the drop-down lists. So what happens if I get a new member of staff? So let's say I had Stuart join the Southern team. Don't forget that when I created the named ranges, I didn't just include the cells that already included names. Uh, I selected down to row 10. So because of that, if I select South here, I can see that Stuart now appears in the drop down list. One final thing, just a bit of error handling. I'll show you what I mean by this. If I was to delete South, I then get this ref error. So this won't look so cool on a database where you've copied the data validation down into empty rows. So instead of the ref error coming up, we really want to show a blank cell. So we need to get this to be blank. The indirect function is returning ref at the moment. Fairly easy to do, to do the error handling. We'd say if error, if error has two arguments, value, which is the indirect function of value if error. And your value if error wants to be this, an empty text string, two double inverted commas. If I press enter, you can see, instead of returning the error, it returns the empty text string. And it's doing it at the moment, but if I was to select something here, and then delete this location, and delete this, you see I'm not getting that, that horrible error uh, in that cell. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Thanks very much for listening. It's been Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer.